here's the deal. Would I do this again? If this pump goes out on me, you know, next week, would I raise the bed to get to the fuel pump? No. Hey, today we are going to tackle a uh, fuel pump replacement on this 88 Chevy. I'm going to pick up half the truck bed, gain access to the top of the tank because the tank is full. Um, four bolts on each side of the bed. I'm going to loosen the ones on the passenger side, completely remove the ones on the driver's side, remove the three bolts in the fuel tank filler. This one is no fun. Took me about an hour, but I got it. While you're at this position, make sure you disconnect your ground wire that's on your fuel filler neck. That's screwed to the bottom of your body with a 10 millimeter bolt. Good riddance. Under here you have two plugs. You got a large one with four prongs. There's a small one with two prongs right there and you have a ground wire that's attached to the frame that goes to the bed you got to remove all all of those real simple that's it right there four prong two prong and a ground wire and this is a 13 millimeter bolt uh, in my case i've got a receiver hitch and i've got to remove it as well because it is in the way Last two on this side. And I've already got this one loosened up. There's the four. They're identical. I've got the four bolts on this side loosened up. They're probably only there's probably only a thread or two actually into the bed, so there's quite a bit of, you know, bolt sticking out. Um, all the wiring's been disconnected, as far as I can tell, ground wires, anything that would uh, keep me from lifting this bed up has been disconnected, as far as I can tell. I emptied out everything out of the bed, including the tailgate, just to lighten the load a little bit, because I'm by myself. I'm going to do this by hand. And I'm not quite sure if, they're, if the bed's even capable of shifting forward, but if it does, I want it to protect the cab. So I took some uh, cardboard and duct tape, jammed it in the middle there. Now I'm going to put the camera on a tripod, and let's just stand back and see how this works out. The plan is to um, lift the bed and wedge some wood in between the frame and the bed. Well, y'all didn't miss much. I kept getting only so high and something was holding me up. I just couldn't figure out what was going on with it. So I, I let it back down and walked over to the other side of the truck and realized that this, uh, the, the back of the fender was into the back bumper so that's what that's from there's a slight dent and a scratch right there no big deal it's actually very uh fairly hidden when everything's assembled so i pulled the back bumper i was probably going to pull that anyway because it's got a dent in it and i'm going to try to pull it out so once i got rid of that then the only thing that was hitting is the tailpipe there but that really wasn't keeping me from rolling up. And uh, really wasn't that big a deal. Just put your shoulder into the wheel well and lift. This piece of wood, I had to cut it down to about 14 inches. Because that's about really all I could get without 
thinking I was gonna, you know, hurt something. I'm looking at all the bolts that are left and they're all stretched out, you know, maximum. So that's without damaging the nut plates that are in the uh, bed of the truck, it's probably about as far as I can go anyway. So I've got this one supporting it. This, my jack stands are too tall for any part of this. So I've got this other piece of wood over here. It's like a three by three. Um, and uh, it's, it's held up with my floor jack. And the bed itself is very, very sturdy. It's, it's, uh, it's probably not the safest thing in the world, but it's all I've got to work with. So with that being up and out of the way finally, I went ahead and took a wire brush and worked around the ring here for the fuel, fuel, uh, fuel pump and sprayed some soapy water on it, worked it in really really well, um, hosed it off, blew it out with a compressor, did the soapy water brush hose and blowing thing about three times because I really want this clean before I remove the ring. This truck's 30 years old, it's running the original uh, fuel pump, so I knew things were not going to go as smoothly as I wish they would. I had to cut the rubber hose that goes between here and here. I also cut the end of this hose because there was enough slack left in there. This hose is only about maybe 15 inches long. It just runs from here down to right around over here. So if this hose is bad, it's got to be replaced or whatever, it's no big deal. You just got to, you're probably going to pull the tank to get to it because it connects to a hard line down here. However, there's slack in there, so if it's giving you a problem, just cut it. And, uh, and, and you'll be able to pull the remaining hose up to that point. These uh, two fittings here are 5 8 You want to use a line wrench, such as this, on your top fitting. And the bottom, hold the bottom with a 3 quarter. Hold this, turn this. Turn the top, hold the bottom. Both of these came off like butter. I mean, I was, I was very surprised. I mean, I've got, I don't have them off yet. They're loose, <laughs> but it's not going to be a problem. Uh, let's see. Disconnect this cable right here. A half inch bolt for your ground wire. Take that out. Then when you get up here, let's see if I can get you in here. You have to turn this inner nut counterclockwise. Use uh, use a, a bar or whatever you have um, up against one of these inner tabs. You have inner tabs and you have these outer tabs. Don't beat on these. These are just indexed. These are just to tell you how far you have to tighten it when you put it back on. If you beat on these, you're going to bend them. These are made, the inner ones, the ones on the inside of the ring are made to take the beating. The ones on the outside of the ring are just made to tell you where to stop when you put this thing back together. So you loosen that up like that. Take an air hose and blow everything out. You know, I have cleaned and cleaned and cleaned and it's still nasty. So I'm getting ready to... Um, blow this out real good again and then disconnect my two fuel lines and pull this thing out after I disconnect this ground. So here's what everything looks like outside the tank. This is your your float for your sending unit to tell you how much fuel you have in the tank. This is the pump and this is the, the initial filter. Uh, it's like a screen just to keep the particulates to get uh, from getting in your pump. And this one, being 30 years old, is trashed. It is junk. So that's got to come off. And then I'll replace the filter, I'm um, sorry, the filter, the pump. And I've heard that these hoses can give you problems, and this one. Looks like it could probably use a, oh yeah, see it's 
coming apart. You can see the black specks hitting the dirt, uh, hitting the plywood down there. So that's going to get replaced. I don't know how much of that's in that box. I haven't opened the box yet, so let's take a look. All right, this is a Bosch pump, fuel pump. I got it uh, from Advance Auto, along with a new filter. Comes with a lot of stuff, but <laughs> it comes with a lot of stuff I probably won't even use. There's a new O-ring for there, for that right there. It goes on top of the tank. New wiring harness, clamps. There's the the hose I need to replace that. New pump. And all on both bags, what does it say? New filter screen required to validate warranty. It says it on both bags, but they don't include it. So I've got to go locate a screen before I can even start this process. I lost the audio on this recording, but I'd already have already installed the new pump. You just loosen up the clamps there at that hose and pull that pump upward and it comes away from that bottom bracket. A lot of guys will bend that bracket right there out of the way to get their pump out. It's totally wrong, not, not required. Just take your clamps off and, and uh, you're going to replace this piece of hose anyway. Look at all the rubber that's coming out from inside that hose. That thing was getting ready to cause me some big problems. Big problems. The new hose section comes with the Bosch pump along with a little wiring harness that will allow you to adapt your wiring harness to the Bosch pump. Uh, that uh, in my hand was that uh, the new uh, screen that's required. Uh, mine was black and just toast. I mean it was crunchy. I'm just going to orient it so that it uh, doesn't block that, uh, that line that's coming down there. When you get everything done you want to make sure that you haven't uh, gotten anything in the way of your float. Uh, take your old o-ring off the top of the tank and install the new one. Might want to do a little cleaning here as well, but be real careful. All right, this is the next day. I had to go find a piece of hose to replace the one I had to tear out right here. Parts place didn't have it, believe it or not. Isn't that crazy? Five eighths, five eighths rubber hose didn't have it. Um. Now that this is all done, tested, no leaks, fuel filter replaced, fuel pump replaced, all this stuff, here's the deal. Would I do this again? If this pump goes out on me, you know, next week, would I raise the bed to get to the fuel pump? No, I would not do it again. I would not do this again. I wouldn't recommend anybody do this again. Um, anybody that is selling this method off as the easier way to get to your fuel pump is that's just not true there's just to get to the fuel pump eight bolts for the bed to keep from tearing up the back fender eight bolts for the back uh, bumper to get it away from the truck when you raise it up six bolts for the receiver hitch once you get uh, numerous wires, connectors, ground wires, um, just to be able to get to all this stuff in here. It's not, uh, it's not the easy way to do it. You, uh, anybody that sells this off as the easy way to do a fuel pump replacement is uh, either misinformed or just full of it. So my advice to you is drop the tank. No matter what, drop the tank. If you, if you don't have a low profile jack to be able to drop the tank, then get some uh, gas cans and empty your tank out to a point where you can handle it. This is crazy. So do it your way. You, whatever you want to do, do it your way. But I'm advising you to drop the tank. Don't raise the bed. That's my, uh, my two cents and I'm out.